when we talk about game balance, we're often talking about multiplayer games, right? We're talking about games where human players fight against other human players. Because in those sorts of games, both sides need to have as close to a fair fight as possible. Not too fair, mind you. You need character and ability diversity for the game to stay fun for a long period of time. Games where both players have the exact same moveset and capabilities tend to be much more fair than games with large character pools, but they get stale a lot faster. But developers try to make their games as fair as possible for players, because an unbalanced game isn't fun, especially for the player who's losing. So developers try, with varying levels of success, to make their multiplayer games as balanced as possible. But nobody ever seems to talk about balance in single player games, do they? Because balance in single player games is just as important as it is in multiplayer games. Not only are unbalanced single player games less fun, but they can also harm the replay value of the game. So there's countless games I could talk about as an example of where single player games have had balance issues, but I'm going to use the game I have the most experience with first. Terraria. Terraria is fairly well balanced for the most part, but there have been a few glaring outliers in the game's history. The most famous example, and the example that was in the game untouched for the longest, is the Daedalus Stormbow. This weapon was way too good for how easy it was to acquire. It's a special type of bow that shoots arrows just like every other bow in the game, but instead of shooting them out of the front of the bow like normal, it causes the arrows to rain from the sky. This weapon's extremely powerful, especially in combination with holy arrows. In fact, holy arrows themselves are way too good for how early that they can be acquired too, but I digress. The way you acquire the bow is from a special type of enemy called a hallowed mimic. These mimics are really rare to spawn naturally, but the player can craft an item that summons them. The Stormbow is a 25% drop chance from these mimics, so it will likely take a couple of attempts, but it can reasonably be acquired the moment you enter hard mode. It's very useful to speedrunners, because even though grinding through the 25% drop chance RNG can be a run killer, the bow is definitely worth the risk and the time spent. Despite being acquired around about here, the item was still useful all the way up until around about here, which means it outclasses all of these weapons despite being accessible earlier than them. Well, at least it used to outclass these weapons, but the team at Redigit nerfed the Stormbow to make it less powerful than it used to be. Redigit are one of the few game developers that's very good at acknowledging the importance of balance in a single player game. So when something's blatantly overpowered, they will often come and bring it back in line with the rest of the items as best as they can. The Stormbow's still a really good item, it's probably still better than it should be, but it's nowhere near as overpowered as it once was. But with Terraria's newest update, they added a new armor set. Well, well they, they, they changed an old armor set to make something that's new. It's basically new. Obsidian armor is now a summoner class armor set. It can be acquired around about here in the game's progression, but can literally take you all the way over to here, right near the end of the game. The reason it's so good isn't because its defense is too high or anything like that, but it gives the player far too high of a damage output. The armor set increases the player's whip speed and whip range, which doesn't sound all that overpowered, but when combined with the stronger whips that you acquire later in the game, it gets pretty ridiculous. You can use your accessory slots to bolster your weak defense, and then just whip every boss in the game to death. Well, at least you could before that got nerfed as well. I'm, I'm late to the party on this one. I'm late to making this video. Shut up, all right? It's fine. Terraria has many more examples of items like this, because there's so many items in Terraria. But it is not alone in having balance issues. There are plenty of other games with just as many balance issues. I've been recently replaying Hollow Knight, and I've been very quickly reminded that the Shaman Stone is just the best charm in the entire game. If you know where you're going, you can get the Shaman Stone in about 20 minutes into a run. The speedrun actually gets it about 10 minutes into the run, and it will likely get used throughout the entirety of the rest of the game. It's a very simple item, it just makes your spells deal more damage, but that is so much more powerful than it sounds. It lets you one-shot a lot of enemies from a safe distance, and it lets you kill bosses much faster than you usually could. 
This item is also very good for speedrunners because it's so easy to acquire and it speeds up every instance of combat in the entire game. This will be a common thread throughout the video. Speedrunners want to beat the game as fast as possible, so speedruns are the first place to look for any overpowered items or abilities in a single player game. If a speedrunner is using it, it's probably far better than every other thing that they could be using. My final game I'm going to talk about is a game that I've not actually talked about yet on this channel. The game's called Transistor. It's made by Supergiant Games, whose most famous game at the moment is this one. Transistor is a super interesting game. It combines real-time combat with turn-based combat. You can use all of your abilities in real time, but you can also freeze time and start your turn, being able to preset your next set of actions as if the game was turn-based. This game's awesome. My main criticism of it is that it isn't long enough, which is a really good sign, so you should go check it out. This video is going to slightly spoil the final boss, so if you do want to play it, make sure to play it before continuing the video. Alright? Alright, good. In Transistor, you can find new abilities all throughout the world, and you can customise your loadout with which four abilities you want to bring into combat with you. There's no single ability that's particularly overpowered, but there are combinations of abilities that are far too powerful. Abilities have special interactions with one another, so all of your abilities will act wildly differently based on which other abilities you're using. Explaining them all is far beyond the scope for this video, so I won't go into too much detail. The ability combination that the speedrun uses allows players to instantly kill a phase of the final boss before it has any chance to retaliate. Each phase has a thousand health, and there's only three phases, so three combo turns allows you to kill the boss basically for free. It looks like this. So what's actually happening there? Well, here's how it works. We use an ability called Crash, we use another one called Load, and we use another one called Help. Crash is a melee attack that weakens enemies after they've been hit. Load drops a packet of bombs that detonate after a small amount of time, and Help spawns a cute little robot doggy that can attack for us. We summon our robot dog, and then we start the turn. At the start of our turn, we use Load, which drops a packet of bombs onto the boss. Then we use Crash, which hits the enemy and weakens him. Then we take control of the robot dog, and we attack the boss with the dog three times. The packet of bombs explodes after the dog is finished attacking, and all of that together deals a thousand damage, which instantly kills that phase of the boss. The moment the boss becomes targetable again on the next phase, you just do it again. One final rotation of the combo, and the boss is dead, and you won the game. The ability combination can be acquired fairly early on into the game, and can be used to basically trivialise every enemy encounter in the entire game. You just one-shot everything. There are other very high damage ability combinations, this combo right here literally does 100,000 damage, but those end up being impractical, it's overkill to deal that much damage. But the item combo used on the boss in these clips is definitely too powerful. It's extremely easy to acquire, extremely easy to pull off, and it insta-kills basically everything. Now, most new players aren't going to figure out that this combo exists, and they're not going to figure out that it's so powerful, right? So, you might be wondering why it even matters. Why does it matter that the speedrunners figured out a cheese combo to insta-kill everything? Well, it matters for two reasons. For a start, the new players that do stumble upon this combo could potentially have the experience of the entire game ruined for them. This game, in my opinion, is at its most fun when you are mixing between the real-time combat and the turn-based combat. It's at its most fun when you're fighting desperately to survive until your next turn comes off cooldown. Being able to instantly kill everything in a single turn makes the game significantly less fun, and new players that find the combo are going to have less fun because they can insta-kill everything. But maybe more importantly than this, Combos like this existing ruin the replay value of a game. I don't know about you, but I personally struggle to replay a game again when I know that something like this exists. Because if I know that there's a best possible combo out there, I find it super hard to not just use the best possible combo. I know that there's a more efficient way of doing things than I'm currently doing them, so I struggle to stop myself from just cheesing the game away. 
I got the Daedalus Stormbow as soon as possible in basically every Terraria run I ever played. I rushed the Shaman Stone in Hollow Knight in my second and my third playthrough, and when I did my New Game Plus run of Transistor, you best believe that I ran around one-tapping everything in the entire game. Of course you can just refuse to use the overpowered items in combos, but it can feel quite frustrating as a player to have to force yourself not to use an item just because it was put into the game in an overpowered state. These three games I've mentioned are incredible games, and I'm by no means saying that any of this ruins these games for me. But I think that these are great examples of the importance of balance in single player games. Just because your game is a single player game doesn't mean it should be unbalanced. Games like Terraria get updates to fix overpowered items, but not every game gets the same treatment. So next time you watch a speedrun of your favourite game, make sure to look out for the overpowered tricks that the speedrunner is using to blitz through the game. Thanks for watching.